Alright, so in this problem, I have x to the power of y minus y to the power of x is equal to 17. So, to solve this problem for my solution, I'm going to first, let me rewrite uh, the equation right here. Now, to start, just by looking at this equation, what can we infer? Well, notice how we have x to the power of y minus something is equal to 17. And 17 is greater than 0, right? Meaning, x to the power of y is greater than y to the power of x. And this also must mean that x is greater than y, and y is greater than 0. So now that we know this, I'm going to rewrite my equation here, x to the power of y minus y to the power of x is equal to 17. And x to the power of y, I can rewrite this as x to the power of y to the power of 2 over 2, because 2 over 2 is the same thing as 1. And x to the power of y to the power of 1 is the same thing as x to the power of y. Now this, I can rewrite as x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2. Because if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is the same thing as a to the power of m times n. So I can switch these up. Now y to the power of x, I can also change this up as well. So y to the power of x, I can rewrite that as y to the power of x to the power of 2 over 2. And this, I can rewrite as y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2. Now from here, remember my original equation was x to the power of y minus y to the power of x equals 17. Now I can replace x to the power of y with x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2, and y to the power of x with y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2. So now I get x to the power of y over 2 to the power of 2 minus y to the power of x over 2 to the power of 2 is equal to 17. Now I'm going to let x to the power of y over 2 equal to the variable a and y to the power of x over 2 equal to the variable b. So now if I substitute in a for x to the power of y over 2 and b for y to the power of x over 2, I get a squared minus b squared is equal to 17. Now if I have something in the form x squared minus y squared, this is equal to x plus y times x minus y. So a squared minus b squared, that's going to equal a plus b times a minus b is equal to 17. Now the only factors of 17 are 1 and 17, meaning that one of these two has to be 17 and the other one has to be 1. So just by looking at this, we can tell that a plus b is going to be 17, and a minus b is going to be 1, because a plus b is greater than a minus b. Meaning, a, I have two equations, a plus b equals 17, and a minus b, b is equal to 1. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add these two equations together. a plus a is 2a, b minus b is 0, so these two cancel out, and 17 plus 1 is 18. So I get 2 equals 18, and if I divide both sides by 2, I get a is equal to 9. Now I can plug back in a for 9 into my original equation. So let's we could just do either one. I'm going to do a plus b equals 17. If I plug in a for 9, I get 9 plus b equals 17, meaning b is equal to 8. So a equals 9, b equals 8. And we can even check it over here. Let's plug both of these in. a is 9 minus b is 8. And 9 plus 8 does equal 1. So now that we know a is 9 and b equals 8, 
we can go back here and notice how we let x to the power of y over 2 equal a and y to the power of x over 2 equal b, meaning x to the power of y over 2 is equal to 9 and y to the power of x over 2 is equal to 8. So to solve this, let's first start by solving the first equation. So x to the power of y over 2 equals 9. I can first start by taking the power of 2 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of y is equal to 81. Now 81, I can rewrite that as 3 to the power of 4. Now I'm going to do the same thing to y to the power of x over 2. I'm going to take the power of 2 on both sides, and then these two cancel out, so I get y to the power of x is equal to 64. Now 64, I can rewrite that as 4 to the power of 3. So I have x to the power of y equals 3 to the power of 4, and y to the power of x equals 4 to the power of 3. Well, what does that mean? Well, y, 4, x, 3, and over here, y, 4, x, 3, meaning x is equal to 3 and y is equal to 4. So this is my solution to this equation. All right, so in this problem, I have 4 to the power of x is equal to 8. So obviously here, I want to find the value of x. So for my solution, first start by rewriting my problem. So I have 4 to the power of x is equal to 8. Now 4 here, this is the same thing as 2 squared. So I'm going to rewrite this as 2 squared to the power of x. I, all I did was replace 4 with 2 squared. And now 8, this is the same thing as 2 to the power of 3. So I'm going to replace 8 with 2 to the power of 3. So I have 2 squared to the power of x is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And if I have something in the form a to the power of m to the power of n, this is equal to a to the power of m times n. So 2 to the power of 2 to the power of x, that's going to equal 2 to the power of 2 times x, which is simply 2 to the power of 2x. And now this is equal to 2 to the power of 3. And now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m, is equal to a to the power of n, this means that m is equal to n, meaning in this case, 2x is equal to m and 3 is n. So I have 2x is equal to 3, and this is a simple equation. All I have to do is divide both sides by 2. So then these two cancel out, and I get x is equal to 3 over 2. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. So to solve this, I'm going to start by subtracting x on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I'm left with x to the power of x plus 1 minus x is equal to 0. Now, if I have something in the form a to the power of m plus n, this is equal to a to the power of m times a to the power of n. So x to the power of x plus 1, this is going to be equal to x to the power of x times x to the power of 1. Now I have this minus x is equal to 0. Now if I factor out x, I get x times x to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 0. 
So now this gives me two equations. I have x is equal to 0, and I have x to the power of x minus 1 is equal to 0. So x equals 0. This is already a solution. Now for x to the power of x minus 1 equals 0, I'm going to add 1 on both sides. So then these two cancel out, and I get x to the power of x is equal to 1. Now, because x has to be the same number, we obviously know that, well, what number to the power of self is equal to 1? That's going to be 1, right? Because 1 to the power of 1 is equal to itself. So x is equal to 1. And there's no, actually, there's no other number that, when you take the power of itself, is going to equal 1. S meaning x equals 1 is the only solution to this equation. So now to check, the original equation was x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. So x to the power of x plus 1 is equal to x. And our first solution was 0. So if I plug in 0, I get 0 to the power of 0 plus 1 is equal to 0. Now 0 plus 1 is 1, so I have 0 power to the power of 1 equals 0. And 0 to the power of any number is itself, so I get 0 equals 0. Now to check for 1, I get 1 to the power of 1 plus 1 is equal to 1. 1 plus 1 is 2, so I get 1 to the power of 2 is equal to 1. And 1 to the power of any number itself, so 1 equals 1. All right, so in this problem, I have x to the power of x is equal to 100. So I'm going to first start by taking the natural log, or ln, on both sides. So I have ln x to the power of x is equal to ln 100. Now, if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, I can move this x1 and b to the front. So this can equal b times ln a. So for ln x to the power of x, I can move x to the front, and I'm going to get x times ln x is equal to ln 100. Now ln 100, that's the same thing as ln of 10 squared. So I get x times ln x is equal to ln 10 squared. And if I have something in the form ln a to the power of b, again, I can move 2 to the front. So I get x times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. Now, there's something called the W Lambert function. And if I take the W Lambert function of something in the form e to the power of, sorry, a times e to the power of a, this is going to equal a. So this is basically what the W Lambert function is. So if there's something in the form a to the power, a times e to the power of a, that's going to equal a. So what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to rewrite x here as e to the power of ln of x because e, the e and ln cancel out, and this results in simply x. So I'm just going to rewrite x as e to the power of ln of x, and I have this times ln x is equal to 2 times ln 10. And now this is in the form a times e to the power of a. So now if I take the w Lambert function on both sides, This results in ln x equaling w of 2 times ln 10. And now if I take e to the power of both sides, I get e to the power of ln x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 ln 10. And e to the power of ln x, that's going to equal x. So I get x is equal to e to the power of w of 2 times ln 10. And this is equal to 3.597285, which rounds up to 3.597. So this is my answer to this problem.